If you don't know me, there's a lot to unpack. I'm a student, a woman, a dancer, a nature lover, an older sister, a daughter, a friend, an educator, and an optimist. It's taken my entire life to grow into these aspects of my identity. When I was just two years old, my mother started a licensed daycare in our home. I guess looking back on it, this was the beginning of my lifelong journey of helping people, particularly youth. Some of my most clear memories as a child are playing with all of my daycare friends and helping my mom look after everybody. Depending on the year, we had up to an additional nine kids in our house five days a week. I never knew anything other than this. Being my mom's little helper was simply the norm for my childhood. Later on, in my middle school years, my mom stopped running her daycare and seeked out a number of different positions outside of our home. As that occurred, I found myself in charge of my younger siblings much more than I had before. As high school approached, I was already a very experienced babysitter and camp counselor, which led me to feel strongly about my ability to lead a group of those younger than me. Also, by the time I'd reached high school, I'd found a second home in my local dance studio. Although I was never the best dancer, moving and being surrounded by my dance family was something that filled my heart with happiness. Before I knew it, things aligned and I became an assistant dance teacher. This position combined my lifelong role of caring for those younger than me and my passion for dance. At the studio, I became known as a patient and considerate assistant. Beyond that though, I began to fall in love with teaching. Getting to see my young dancers week after week and watching them progress over the course of the year was a bright spot for me. The joy that I got from helping lead dance classes led me to more seriously consider teaching as a future career. I started finding little opportunities to volunteer in school settings and to get a taste for what it would be like to be a teacher full time. My junior and senior years of high school were drastically impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. School was no longer a place that I went and rather something that I did. This also meant that my attempt at getting a taste of what it would be like to be a teacher came in mostly virtual settings. I led activities on Zoom for younger students throughout my entire senior year of high school and ultimately determined that teaching is what I was supposed to do. Parker Palmer writes, there's a Quaker saying, let your life speak. Before you tell your life what you intend to do with it, listen for what it intends to do with you. Before you tell your life what truths and values you have decided to live up to, let your life tell you what truths you embody, what values you represent. I feel as though life told me in its own roundabout way that I was meant to teach. As I've already said, looking after those that are younger than me has been something that I've been doing for as long as I can remember. All of that brings me to where I am today. I chose to come to the University of Minnesota for college to study both elementary and special education. In my time at the U, I've gotten to engage in community work in a couple of ways. First, as a part of both my majors, I've been a pre-service teacher and been a part of several classrooms. At this point, I've been fortunate to get to work at four different elementary schools, one middle school, and two high schools, each for an entire semester in length. My role as a pre-service teacher has been supporting students in a variety of ways. Sometimes I find myself doing whole group instruction like you see here, and other times I find myself working in small groups or one-on-one -on -one with students. I aim for academic growth as well as increased social and emotional well-being for all of my students. Besides working directly in schools as a part of my majors, I have a work-study job with the College of Education and Human Development's America Reads program. Through my time with America Reads, I've worked at the Good Neighbor Center in St. Paul, helping students with their homework and leading small group activities in a variety of subjects. I also tutored virtually over Zoom with the Eastside Learning Center, working one-on-one -on -one with students specifically targeting reading fluency. Additionally, I am currently working with Luxton Learners in Minneapolis, where I am implementing literacy content and working on social and emotional skills. All of this community engaged work that I've been doing on my own in college may join in the Center for Community Engagement Scholars program and no-brainer. After hearing about the program in one of my classes, I sought out more information and joined the program shortly after. Being a part of the Scholars program has helped me reflect on the time that I've spent doing community engaged work. I've truly been able to compare and contrast the experiences I've had over the course of my life and thought deeply about the differences between community engaged work and shallow volunteerism. Some of the volunteering that I participated in during my high school years was more of a one and done type of project as opposed to what I do now where I work with the same students for a very extended period of time. My time in the Scholars Program has helped me to recognize the type of community engaged work that I want to be involved in going forward. With college graduation right around the corner, I know that I have the opportunity to leave my future classroom and engage with my school community for years to come. I can't wait to see where life will take me next.